Um, oh, you know what? Okay, we're live. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Hi, and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> um, we are here today to do a live, and we're doing it live with, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to let Jerome take over and introduce everybody. I'm Brooke. Uh, I'm a, I don't know. Should we have, like, like character names now that we're... <laughs> oh, that's too much thinking. I need mean, no, more time. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can tell everyone hello. Are you are you done introducing Brooke? I don't. Want yeah, to I'll, I'm done. You, you okay. Go ahead and take over because I'm going to pull up uh, the comments so that we can monitor them. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everyone. Beetlejuice here, more formally known as Jerome, and uh, happy Halloween to you all. And hello, we have Sherry joining us in just a sec. We'll be able to introduce everybody in a minute, um, but. We are going to be doing today a Halloween special, which we're excited about. We get to kind of just have fun today, um, speak around fears, um, and pretty much snowball from there. Um, let's go ahead and we can introduce Lisa, and then we'll go over to Abby, and then we'll go over to Sherry after that. So Lisa, what is your stage name for today, or surname? I'm not that fast of a thinker, but I am a flapper girl. <laughs> Case you can't tell, I got my cocktail, I got my fan, ready to go and talk about our fears and go through this exciting journey that we're going to go through today. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. That works. Um, shall we say? Abby. Abby. I am Abby, and I just thought of it. Um, since we're talking about fears, Today for Halloween, I'm going to be Abby for all the moments in my life that I was too scared to show up as her. I love that. Mm. And next up, Sherry, if we have your sound, I'm not sure. We have you muted at the moment. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to be just me today. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> These both Sherry and Abigail recently um, are certified life coaches. They took our previous weekend's class and we're excited to have them today. And now we will move over to, did you give yourself a name, Brooke? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just Brooke. Brooke is a skeleton and this is my okay. unicorn. Well, How? <laughs> and uh, I guess she'll, she'll go ahead and lead us off with the conversation today. Uh, who is? What are, wait, oh, are you, maybe you, not. I'm, no. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to let everybody know watching because I see that we have some people watching to make sure you comment uh, while we're doing this. And please, we want to we want to hear from you guys and we'll be monitoring comments. So please, please, please get involved on our spooky, 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 spooky <laughs> CLCI live um, uh, right now. So we have Abigail and we have Sherry. <laughs> Am I correct? I remember. Okay. Yes. It says Howard's iPhone. That's why it says Howard's iPhone. That's <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so he pays the bill. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we want to talk Keep about. On, Howard, can we have Howard pay our bills? Too? <laughs> um, I think Jerome's going to fix that. There we go. <laughs> um, so, tis the season, right? So, what? Let's start off with with talking about what what it is you guys um, are most afraid of moving forward uh, with your coaching. And if we want to start sharing. I'm, I'm thinking I'm just um, I'm going to have to push myself just to get out there and to um, just to go out there and do this. I mean, there, there's feel of it, fear of failure, um, not having clients, you know, not knowing there's a lot for me to learn, not only in life coaching, but also how to market, how to run a business, um, all of that's unfamiliar to me. So um, just a big learning curve and um, just, you know, a, having the confidence to go out there and say, I can do this. So during those fears that you're Did you hear me? Oh, was I still there? <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, Sherry, during those, that yes. expression of your fears about this new, I'm going to say leap of faith from the class um, that I'm hoping you had a great time from, when awesome. in your history of you, have you made that leap of faith for yourself? And 
came to the other side of it? What was that like? Mm. I'm not sure if I, I, I can reflect back on a leap of faith um, where I actually did something like this. I know there have been some really hard things that I've gone through in life and I know I came out the other side and I've drawn inner strength from that. Um, so, so what I'm doing is just trying to fit. Tell me more about so that. What inner I'm doing strength. is just trying that inner strength that you're reflecting inner strength. as you're re going over your history of you. Mm -hmm. um, there have been um, times in my life where I've actually struggled and I've, um, you know, uh, what comes to mind is uh, a relative with health issues where I know nothing about medicine and I had to learn pretty quick. Um, and so those are the times when I've actually, I've had no choice and I've had to um, research, I've had to become knowledgeable and I've come out the other side. So I know that if I stay focused and I, um, and I just, um, you know, make these goals. Um, and one of my goals is to go back over the manual and read everything in a two week period. I have another goal of, um, I, I actually had the three goals. Um, and so as long as I'm focused and I'm moving forward, you know, staying in, act, in action instead of staying still, I, did, I was listening and um, move forward that just walk through the fear in faith. That's kind of what my saying is, walk through the fire in faith. I want to ask you about the word fail, fail and failure. Um, explain to, to me what that is. What it is. Um, what is failure? Um, probably achieving less than my expectations. Okay. Tell me more about expectations, your expectations. Um, well, my expectation for being a life coach would be not only helping people, but from a professional or a business point would be to actually make money. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, it would be to make a living, an actual living at this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking coaching hat all together. Would I, I'm coming from somebody who is uh, herself, that's always a crippling thing is that fear of failure, being a failure, not making it, not living up to your expectation. But a big part of what I have learned in going through this is you're, it's not, it's never going to be exactly what you expected because it's going to, it's going to change. It's going to be its own thing. And being in it and be, being in the experience is going to, um, just by virtue of living it, it won't be what you expect. Um, and then failure is, isn't failing it truly. It isn't, it's a, it's a chance to learn. It's a lesson. It's, um, you know, it's, True. it's about learn and redirect, learn and redirect. As long as you're out there still working at it and trying, you haven't failed. Uh, and failure really shouldn't be called failure as much as, you know, just giving it up <laughs> um, if, if, if that's what you do. Stumbling. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's, I mean, it, that you're learning. It's learning every step of the way. So, and you're going to have moments where it just feels like, ugh. But imagine yeah. somebody falling down. Yes. But they never get up. What's the learning there? Nothing. <laughs> somebody falling down and then finds their resilience to climb the next step. What was that learning in between? Are you asking me or yeah, just an things analysis? Yeah. And so that's, that's that growth curve. Sometimes we make giant leaps onto that growth curve 
And then there's times that we fall back. It's preparing. And that's where we as coaches can coach one another is helping each other understand that there's that forward motion. And then sometimes it does come back where we have to repeat or revisit a, a behavior that we hadn't quite learned out of. And our psychology can get in the way. So even us, all of us, we rely on each other, even certified life coaches, we use each other to help lift each other up and realize up. that momentum, even though we've made some steps backwards, that we're still, we, we, we can't go back. We're still, even those steps backwards are propelling forward because that resilience piece allows us to get up and do it again. Get up, move forward, get up. I don't want to do that anymore. Here's the new learning piece. So it's the get up, get going that you mentioned earlier. You, you, so these are like notes. I don't know if you can see them. It's how I take notes. <laughs> Just jot down some words that I hear you say. You <laughs> backing yourself up with research. And there's at points when we do this, you've researched enough. How do you know when you've researched enough? Like with your, I don't remember if you said it was a friend or family member who had some health issues that you went down that path and you learned all that you could learn and you helped in that resilience either with yourself and or with the person you were working with. You mentioned how focused and action are definitely an important piece of this. Absolutely. When, you, when we need our breaks though to stop, take our breath and really get that breathing going so that we can release some of that energy that gives us that angst. When we release that energy, then we have the information come in and we are able to follow through with that much better. It's that angst. What do we do with the angst that we feel in that moment? How do we move through that? What is something that you do, Abigail? Or Abby, I think you're. <laughs> Um, either one is fine. Um, to move through the angst, I know in the past I've let the angst shut me down, but just probably within like the last couple months, I really tried to fill the angst rather than escape it. And I noticed when I allow myself to feel it, um, it's far less big as I think it is in my mind when I actually just sit in it and I'm like oh this is just something that's that is unknown or unfamiliar territory and it's just my mind reacting to that feeling of unknownness but it's kind of like what you were telling Sherry when is a time um where you have overcome it and in those moments where I feel the angst I allow myself to feel it and then I reflect back and think, okay, I've been here before. I know this feeling. And when I go back to the feeling of being there before, it's a very similar feeling of me coming into something, not feeling qualified, not feeling like I know enough, not feeling um, like I'm ready. And then I replay the past moment. And for example, like I was a fashion student and I had to learn how to sew and I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I like looked at the machine and I was like, no way, like I can't do this. And I took a class and I remember the class I was in had women of every age. And it really opened my mind to see so many people hungry and then it opened my mind to see there's really no perfect time to start. There's women in their 60s in this class. There's women in their 80s in this class. There's women in their 20s. There's teenagers. And so it just took a lot of pressure off. And I just came in there and was like, I'm just going to allow myself to make mistakes because I know that's the inevitable. Like, I'm going to make mistakes. I made garments backwards. I made them upside down. Like, and I would just allow myself to be in that moment and be like, I didn't know any better, but now I do. So one of the things I heard you say that seems like a key element to what you're describing, and I'm, correct me if I get it wrong, is you said you were noticing. I'm noticing. So you're looking outside for some of that feedback that allows you to feel more comfortable. 
And so now I'm gonna go on the opposite side. What happens if you don't get any feedback? How do you stabilize that angst? Um, it's kind of like the way we started class. I have to talk myself through it and how we started class when Daniel gave us that um, excerpt of the woman who said, I'm okay and you're okay. And just those two words, I'm okay. I really, I had wrote a note in my phone probably a couple years ago where in the moments where I would feel anxious, I would go to this little note and I would read it to myself and I would be like, in this moment, I'm okay. And it would calm. It had such a like power um, for me that would bring me back to the present moment and get outside of my thinking and then it would just ground me. Mm -hmm. Do you have something, Sherry, to share about that? Oh, not right off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> Brooke or Jerome, what, uh, what do you do when you have that angst and you're not getting that calming feedback? Uh, I mean, Jerome, do you want to go? I mean, I, I can share. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that doesn't, I'm, I'm very solo for the most part. And so, um, I'm, I, you can say I'm very, um, internally motivated and because of that, I'm also an internal, you know, but the voices can go a little cuckoo every so often. Um, uh, but I have developed uh, many a tool, especially because when you're, I've struggled with PTSD and, um, being someone that, that struggled with PTSD, your brain can be your worst enemy at times. And um, yeah. fear plays a great, 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 great part in that. Um, and yeah. so managing my fear has been something that has um, been, Lisa's helped me with actually, uh, but it's been something that I've worked very hard at. And it was the realization that I didn't have to suppress my fear, um, but that I, I could actually use the energy it creates to do something with it. Um, that 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 really changed my world because pushing the fear down all the time really just made it seem bigger and it does the same when I'm feeling uh, you know anxious about something I'm doing my dad always said to me growing up though if you're not anxious about it you don't care about it mm -hmm. so anything that you are nervous about it's because you care because it matters to you so that's that's a sign that it means something to you and so so it's not bad thing, right what? it's not bad to have no. those feelings it's, mm. it's uncomfortable to be stuck in those feelings. And that's what we're talking about are those stuck. And anything new is scary, right? Anything, I mean, we could go into it like, oh God. I mean, so much of what I, my, I mean, I, I like it though. I kind of crave it it's bad. Like, I'm like <laughs> you know, I like to, to like go diving head first into an experience uh, in many ways, or, or I get this gut feeling and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I can be nervous the whole time, but what I keep pushing, right? And I keep my eyes open and I, I just try to stay on the pulse and, and trust myself because that's a big part of it is really trusting trusting that you are capable and you are, you absolutely are. I mean, we've got tools, all kinds of them uh, that we don't even realize we have. Um, the amount of observations we make through life, it's all there as, as, a, as a foundation for us to, to make it through. So you've got everything you need already inside you. You really do. So fear is net. Yeah. So it's a fear good thing. is natural. You just can't let it paralyze you. Exactly. exactly. It's a good thing. You just cannot let it paralyze you. You have to move through it. But it's a natural feeling. It's it's probably un, to say you, you you you're not afraid. That's not possible. That's a natural feeling. <laughs> Even though yeah. you like to not be afraid. <laughs> if we didn't have fear, we wouldn't, I mean, it, it's a survival mechanism. We, it's built in us so that we would, we would know, okay, we should, it, the, okay, we're walking along, here's an example Dan uses, if we're walking along a trail and we've walked around along the trail a thousand times, we're not afraid because we're used to it. But then this time, for some reason, a bear jumps out and mauls my friend. Well, from that time forward, I'm going to be a little scared to walk, the, right when we get to that area, why? Because I know that that's possible and I want to survive. So it's a product of survival. Um, and then uh, 
it, it's what keeps us alive. It's a very important part of us. It can be passed down seven generations. Did you know that? That's crazy, right? The, Through the, our part, DNA. the part that keeps us more stuck is when we apply that knowledge to areas like something new in our business that doesn't need to really be there. And that's the piece of the stuck piece that we're kind of uh, focusing on, right? Where Brooke came in a, a great example of a good reason to be afraid, a good reason to be alert, a good reason to watch for danger when we're making leaps in this new direction. Once we've got some training, once we understand what things are, we've, we've got enough to get moving yet we don't do that. That's what we're, that fear that we're talking about, how to get through those emotions. And one of the things Abigail said is she just kind of does it. She um, shared with us that she's used her past experiences to help her move forward. She has self-talk. And then again, we have positive if we label it positive, negative, we have positive self-talk and we have negative self-talk. That negative can take us down that slippery slope. But when we start raising our vocabulary to raise us up instead of taking us down a different way, that can help us grow in a different direction. Well, I don't think too that it's, it's uh, fair to say that, that, you know, there's this fear that there's going to be fear mm -hmm. regardless. Um, but the difference being is, is when, when it was our survival, we had to walk down that trail yeah. because we had to get to food, right? right? That's what we were doing. So we had to go get yeah. food. Now yeah. we don't as much have to get food. So we have to face our fears, but we have that same mechanism and it's not a life or death. And that's why it can be crippling. That's why we cannot move forward because we don't right. have that push of like, I'm starving. I need to move forward. And that's sometimes why, and one of the things I've said in my whole life is you have to be hungry hungry to make it basically you have to be um a little scared and a little hungry to get <laughs> to what you want if you want to be a big dreams um yeah. Yeah. if you're if you're you know fat and happy you're probably gonna stay right where you're at uh because you're fat and happy so <laughs> hungry hungry and hungry and and unhappy isn't always a bad thing it motivates change so um and same and scare fear fear is a natural part of that so um so it's using what we know about ourselves and how to help that be a, a moving experience and not a, a, there's times that it's stopping us is a good thing too. And so it's just being aware, self-aware. I'm finding, a linger. I find lists for some reason to help me. So like if I look at the picture and I just list out, okay, this is what has to happen. And then, and then, you know, sort of how to attack it. Um, I think that that for me helps in so many ways with yeah. a lot of times the fear comes from not knowing, but when you put it out, thinking, uh -huh. overthinking, that's where mine comes into trouble. Sometimes you don't do yes. There's something that I notice once I notice the pattern of fear, then I could spot it a mile away. Like I got out of class mm -hmm. and I was all excited yesterday, Sunday. And I was like, yes. And then immediately something happened. And I was like, hold on, what is happening? Like, I'm excited. This is a great experience. And then I noticed it was the time of the month that I was, I'm a woman and I was experiencing my experience as a woman. And I, I noticed the pattern of my thinking in that time. It does. It changes so much. It changes a dramatic difference. It's not fair. <laughs> it's okay. and I, but I, I, in the past, I would totally fall into the trap of like, oh, I made a mistake. Like, and I'd go down that path of letting that thinking that's not, it's not the right logic because I'm under different emotions. I'm under different circumstances. And I had to step outside of myself and like, look at myself and say, oh my gosh, you're doing it. You're doing it now. And then I was like, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to let it rest for two days and I'm going to come back to it. And two days later, I was like, I'm on fire. Let's do this. Like, yeah, I got this. And it was like good. the state <laughs> I was in was not the right space to start going full-blown entrepreneur. I got this. I was like, it was a day where I wanted to pull back from life and rest and not think about anything. And I had to understand that about myself, but I have 
really put like you talked about Brooke just doing the work like I've done the work of trying to understand my patterns and see where those patterns have paralyzed me and I'm like I'm not gonna let this pattern rule my rule my life anymore like but I have to put the time in and do that hard work of feeling it to know oh I've I've been to this feeling before be good <laughs> this is it's a tool that we teach in level two um this is actually what's what's very cool is a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is something we really delve into in, in level two quite a bit um and going through the patterns of fear and backing and all of that good stuff um we spoke uh, about it um i think relatively recently um which I, I i i mentioned i use it very frequently and in the case of fear this is something i use a lot as well is Cartesian logic is yep. mm -hmm. presenting options um, as far as what could happen if I did or didn't do something. And um, one thing I'm more afraid of than fear of failure, which we all seem to be talking about and all kind of really have in common, uh, is stagnation and being stuck somewhere for a period of time. And at the end of that, that timeline, you look back and realize you, you haven't moved a bit um so part of cartesian logic is considering if i don't do this this is where i could be stagnant five six months from now and um again as i said that's ultimately something i think i'm more afraid of than uh failure itself so yeah. and also understand i i try and tell myself that you know at the end of this road the you know you might fall in your face that might suck a couple times but at the end of this road going to come out better and stronger for it so I, I i find my fear often is um not is is fear of not being like not being able to do something like fear that that things out of my control will keep me from prevent me or from being able to do something i want to do because that's so important <clears throat> to me um it's is sort of to just ha having options, I guess, is very important to me. It's something I value very much, the freedom to be able to do what whatever I need. Um, and that that's a scary thought too, that if I wanted something, I had a goal or a dream um, and I, I couldn't reach it and there was nothing I could do about it, that would kill me. But the good thing is there are things we can do and that's, that's beautiful and amazing. Um, and I just get more creative is what I <laughs> always think. Okay, we've got to find a creative way. Creative, we, we can go to the moon, we'll go to the moon. We just got to find a way there. For me, I have to meditate. I have to be quiet. I, I, I don't want any feedback in that time. I don't want to have a conversation in that time. I may do some writing or some jotting. Um, writing is so helpful. Yeah. Um, it just depends on my place and what I need to do in that moment. And then I have to... I find I have to find that switch where I turn it off and just make that leap forward. So for me, that's how I kind of get through things. Um, when I first went into this coaching model, and that was, you know, back in 2011, when I started the coaching path, working with couples, um, it's like, what, what do I have to give? What do I have to share? What uh, are they going to find me um, ridiculous? <laughs> are they going to find that I have been very supportive of them? Uh, so that imposter kind of syndrome feeling. And, and then the first person or the first couple that I actually did work with, um, I kind of don't really remember a whole lot. I remember feeling like it was very productive, totally followed the coaching model. Um, but don't re didn't remember much about it. And in the end they asked, well, can we book another appointment? And I'm like, oh, because I forgot to ask them then. Right. And so I, of course, yes. So when you're in this and when we're helping people in this, uh, coaching model that we are, we shared with you guys over the weekend, uh, it, it's not so much work for us and in it not being so much work for us, it's a lot of work to relax into this and stay calm into this and just trust the client that they're supposed to get whatever they're supposed to get out of this through or the facilitation of us being this incredible coach. 
And it just, when you settle your soul into this, it just comes together beautifully. So when you think about what I'm sharing and in your words, well, how are you settling your soul into making that um, direction of coaching for yourself? There you want for to me, it's, um, I can't get in. I have to stay out of my head. If I get in my head, then that's where a lot of fear starts. Um, and a friend of mine said, you can, you know, you can be a hoarder in your own head. Oh, I um, love that so much term. junk up there that you really, for me, <laughs> that you, you just, um, for me, I, I, I can't overthink it. And I just have to kind of stay structured and be, and be planning and moving forward. Okay. Um, cool. And, and I know like over the weekend when we were doing, you know, the, the um, practice counseling sessions, um, one of the people that were, I was observing and one of the people that were playing the counselor or the coach, the coach um, that she was overthinking. And as soon as she kind of, it was funny because she was overthinking and she was kind of trying to remember all the, 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 the methods and everything we learned and, and trying. And then the person that was playing the client said something and they wind up laughing. And then when she started laughing, I mean, just her natural personality came out and it was amazing. She was like, it was such a good connection and they were laughing and they were connecting. And that's what I told her. I said, you know, as soon as you stopped overthinking it, you were a natural coach. And um, so that's, I guess that's really what we have to be is we have to, um, you know, just be natural and um, don't overthink it. Be yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I, this, I, I wanted to share this real quick. This is, I, I was coached not too long ago and you probably can't read it, um, but I'm kind of like the Riddler. I write on things and put them up. This is my in my head solution. So um, I just thought it was funny because you were talking exactly about that. And it basically says, get grounded, stop, sit down and shut up, <laughs> um, breathe and listen. And then I just thought, I, I listen to what you feel in your heart, what you know in your gut. And then when I feel rooted, then proceed. Um, but it just reminded me of this, th that <laughs> I keep this right by my bed. <laughs> so there was just to play off that, Brooke, there's another one that I got, and I can't remember what this coach's name was through another place. Um, he said uh, to take the event that happened, right? Uh, to pause, think, breathe, just recognize that process, which is what you're saying yeah. as well. <laughs> Says, okay, now, what is that desired outcome that you really wanna to move towards? And to be working on that and that action step that goes with it. Um, typically what we do is we have an event and then we have a reaction to that event. So it's trying to, as what Brooke is talking about too, is trying to remove that reaction when it's not an emergency, where, where do we want to go with this? How do we actually feel about this? Breathing, taking that time to do our own assessment and then come out to the other side of where do I really want this outcome to be? And then find the steps that go with that. And I know Abigail, we have cut you off a couple of times. So please share with us. Yeah. No, I was thinking about um, what Sherry mentioned, um, just like keep moving and uh, like a year into my um, my sewing experience, I started working at a tailor shop and I got around people who were 30 years in and I noticed I started comparing myself to how much they knew with my little one year experience as if I was supposed to be at 30 year mark with my one year mark. And I came into this shop and I remember the manager was like, she just had so much wisdom and she was super intimidating at first for me. And so she'd look over my shoulder and be watching me. 
and I'd like feel my palms sweating like she's gonna figure out I don't know anything and this is a total fraud experience she's gonna figure me out how did I get here and then I got to the to the point where she didn't even have to ask me what I knew or didn't she'd be like you don't know what you're doing do you and she'd like call me out on my my stuff and then I'd be like no and she'd be like you're not supposed to know come here I'll show you and she had this calm about her like remember you're a student you're learning and I took this approach after that experience where I was like I always of course I want to get to a point where I'm really well at what I practice but I also want to take this approach to life where I'm always allowing myself to be a student and if I allow myself to always be a student I won't put so much pressure on myself to be a master and um, in that moment, when I left there, I was there for six months and I came out with so much knowledge. Like every day I would just say, what can I learn today? Not what can I like, not how can I be like that guy over there, but like, what can I learn for Abby today? I'm going to leave with one takeaway, one thing I didn't know when I walked in. And it was like, I just kept adding more tools to my belt. And so I feel the same way with coaching is the only way through is through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't avoid the experience of like sitting in and sometimes feeling like, oh man, this is my first session or this is my third session. And I think of kids, a kid can only be one once. I can only be in my first year of coaching my first year yeah and well, so if I just allow that year to be and then just keep letting it unfold yeah I'll be, able then, to be present I think too there's something there's a beautiful piece of of a I don't know just wisdom you can take from that statement and and actually apply it to being mindful too because it's you only get your first year one time so savor every moment um not only learn from it but enjoy it because you'll never get your first coaching session a second time you know you'll never so suck it in and 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 look at it from the perspective of this is a awesome experience i get to do and i get to live this one time and i'm learning through this process and approach it if you pro if, man if i approached everything like that like <laughs> life would be if i approached like going to the grocery store like with that kind of attitude and life would be pretty amazing um but that's what being mindful is right like i only get to the, go to the grocery store today on the 27th one time and i'm gonna suck it up man <laughs> it's gonna be awesome um but my dad another thing my dad has always said uh, when you stop learning you start dying and, and that, you know, he, every time I speak to him, what'd you learn today, Brooke? Yeah. Um, and we'll always be students. I hope to always be a student and I hope to always be learning. And I, I hope to share what I learn as well. Uh, learn, grow, share, as far as I'm concerned is the meaning of life. So <laughs> when, when I used to uh, go out, when we used to travel around and teach the same thing and I would go out and teach, I'm an introvert. <laughs> And as an introvert, I'm teaching, I got a lot of people in front of me. So that's where I go to. I take my breath. I have, I had a setup that the students would go through. I take my, take my breath. I watch what they're experiencing. I take some more breathing. And then I go, what can I learn today? And then I leap into it. That's what I had to do every single time of the lots and lots of times I've taught. Um, the coaching, I didn't need to do that because it's not a big group typically that I'm working with, um, usually working with two. <sighs> Making that, again, that just that resilience, finding that resilience. Jerome, share with us how you find your resilience. You're on mute. Um, whenever it comes to me trying to find something that, that keeps me going, um, really, if I ever find myself stuck, um, more often than not, it's me considering factors 
that I can't control. It's out of my control. Um, but for whatever reason, um, I spend way too much time trying to assume that I can or assuming that I can. And um, when I really find my stride, it's in moments where I realize and tell myself, you can only control what what is in front of you, what you can control. And um, once I truly sit in that and proceed with that understanding, that is when I feel as though I found my resilience. Yeah. One of the things Dan, our, one of our teachers says, he says, don't coach the ghost. That's a perfect segue into that concept. Don't coach the ghost, even for yourself. What are you in control of? is a marvelous question because you're only, everybody already knows the answer. You're only in control of what you can handle and what you you have the capability of doing. Um, anything you wanna add about that coaching the ghost there, Brooke? Well, I mean, that is- Skeleton, I mean. <laughs> yes. I don't know what, skeletons don't make sounds. So it's not like, and you're like, that is, I mean, only one of the, I was something I'm thinking as we've been talking about this. Um, we, as people put so much focus on what is out of our control, what other people are thinking, what other people are feeling out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's really at the end of the day, if we bring our focus in and we just worry about us and how we feel and what's going on with us and whatever we need to do to make sure that we are solid um, and really being, it's, it is, it's being selfish, but being selfish isn't, isn't a bad thing. Um, really everybody else kind of is. It's something I realized when I was younger. Um, I used to be really insecure about it, what everybody was thinking about me. I've since let go of it, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but because I realized everybody's really, for the most part, they're walking away from the situation, probably thinking the same way I'm thinking, you know, and worrying about what they did, th their stuff. And, and they're not worrying about me. So I don't need to assume that anybody else is. And I just need to worry about me right here. And again, what I can control. And there's so much power in that, in making your world smaller in that way, you know, uh, because you, when you stop worrying about everybody else, you can start focusing on you and what you need and what it, and giving yourself the power to do that. So there's interesting things that she's speaking about, um, Ms. Brooke here. It is about having a balance in your world, your, your world, that gut, that heart and your brain all being in balance. When we're getting into that overthinking and overanalyzing and in the judgment space, that's not balance. It's bringing it all together so that you have full capacity to evaluate what's your next direction and step that best suits you and the direction you want to move towards. So yeah, perfect. I will, I'll say a huge key to my resilience. This is something I learned from, from somebody, again, who went through PTSD and spent, isolated herself and she did that. Having a network, um, having a, a support system, family, friends, people, that you can call when your brain is out of control and you just can go, hey, I just want to talk this through with you. Um, that is huge because all of a sudden something that seems like this big, when you just talk it out with somebody can become this big, you know what I mean? It can be so much more manageable. So just having that, that, that person you can call on, that, that you know, phone a friend moment and where you can, hey, I just want to run this by you because I, tell, tell me if I'm nuts right now. Um, uh, and just to talk it out. And even if that person tells you you're nuts, you may not think you're nuts, but in by virtue of getting it out there, you you know, it really helps show you what you want, what you're capable of. And that's, again, that's coaching too, at the same time. That's really a big part of what we do, so. And, and no, if it's not a coach that you're going to, because a coach is gonna stay more neutral in their helping you uncover what you're needing to cover. But if you're going to, uh, other team member that is not a coach, you already know what their answer is going to be. You already know them well enough to know what kind of support you're going to get from them. That's why you're going to them. So if you truly want to have a neutral place as a coach, get yourself a coach. Mm -hmm. 
so that you can help yourself be, become a better you, which in ultimately becomes a better coach as well. Because I just hired my coach. I just got a, a coach. It's official now. I'm officially co getting a, I officially have a coach. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, have, all coaches should have coaches, I think, really. I mean, I think it's wise myself. <laughs> We all coach each other at the LCI. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do. Okay, where what do we? Well, yeah, how are, any final thoughts from Abigail or Cherry or um, Jerome on our spooky Halloween? We should, we should end with a trick or treat at the end of this. <laughs> I, I just wanna say, um, you know, a lot of the stuff we're speaking about somewhere deep down, we kind of all really know this, right? Uh -huh. There's a, it's stored somewhere, it's, away, it's somewhere uh, within us. And moments like this is something that I can appreciate because for you to only truly realize and live with some of these things that we know is to practice and to continually um, make yourself aware of what you do deep down understand and know. So I wanna thank all you guys for, for that, for being able to uh, be a part of this discussion and then also I uh, challenge everyone else who is viewing this um, to step into that practice a bit more often sometimes um, with things that you may not be familiar with as far as how to um, have them implemented into your lives, but you do know they exist and you're aware of it somewhere deep down. I just invite you guys to try that out a bit. And also Sean, Sean says, hello, Jerome. He says, great program, Jerome. He was a little late, but he wanted to send you some love. <laughs> no worries, John. There's going to be plenty of opportunities in the future. <laughs> um, and also, I want to say hi to Trisha uh, as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for interacting. We appreciate you. Thank you for saying hello. Um, Abigail? Hello to all the classmates that just mm -hmm. graduated with us. Um, I would finalize this and thank you all for your beautiful insights. Um, I love this group. One thing that really quick clicked with me in this community is that there's such a beautiful thing to know that there are people out there that are working on themselves and really trying to grow. And it really comforted me to know that we have this community, we have access to this community and um, to know that we're all in this thing trying to become better day by day together. Um, and lastly, I would say my final statement from one of my favorite coaches on the planet, Tim Story, um, he says, feed your faith and starve your doubts. And so when you are fearful, um, I think we do a great job at focusing so much on the fears, but if we can flip that and take a moment in our day where we feed our faith instead and feed um, the part of us that can believe in ourselves more and more each day, I think it'll greatly, greatly affect that fearful person in all of us. Can we do uh, can, something kind of crazy really quick? Can we all say something that we, uh, we are confident about ourselves? Just compliment ourselves and just everybody take a moment and say something that you are absolutely and completely capable of and, and uh, proud of or and just share that take a moment I mean, we do we talk about the fear so much but let's talk about a little success yeah let's feed our faith <laughs> um uh jerome do you want to start <laughs> yeah i'm extremely confident in in my ability to be empathetic um i'm not going to talk about the uh sometimes downfalls of it i will <laughs> praise the appreciation that i do have for it because um sometimes i mean i run into people who lack empathy and it's uh it's a it's a space i i prefer not to be so i do appreciate my empathy and that's something i'll praise sherry um probably my ability to be compassionate um i've had a lot of compliments on that and i feel like i do um my husband he jokes with me because he says don't don't say, um, don't ask the waiter, waiter or waitress how they're doing because we've actually had, I've said, how are you doing? We've had actually had like a couple of waitresses sit down and start crying at the table when we were out at dinner. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of, <laughs> um, and the one thing I do want to say is the things, 
when I've had choices to make in life and when I've made choices that were out of the box or maybe unexpected and people kind of thought, you know, why aren't you just playing it safe? Those choices actually have made me the happiest. Um, and I've made those choices and done those things. Those are the things that have brought me and made me happy. So um, I just want to end with that. Thank you. Thank you. Abby? <laughs> I would say I am um, most confident in being relatable to every single person. Not pleasing every person, but being relatable enough to understand where they're coming from and their perspective in this world. Lisa? Gosh, I'm trying to choose, I mean, this is gonna sound obnoxious a little bit. I'm trying to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You don't have to. <laughs> um, I love how much empathy I have with others and I'm starting to get emotional. I love how accepting um, there's times, you know, as Jerome said, we're not going to go there on the flip side, but the mo majority of who I am, I'm very accepting and when I love you, you guys know I love you, right? There's no question about that. Um, the ability to be supportive. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it there, but I'm, I'm very proud of who I have worked really hard to become. Continue that work and growth as always. Um, so thank you, Brooke, your turn. Um, I am, uh, well, I, I'm proud of myself for being smart enough to surround myself with amazing people. <laughs> um, uh, but you, I, what? <laughs> I said, this is for you. You always finish. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm something I'm capable of is being resourceful. Um, I'm, uh, somebody who can look at you know, a rock and a paper clip and, uh, uh, you know, a, a bobby pin and try to make an airplane out of it. <laughs> Just who I am and um, can see possibility where other people may not be able to. And um, I'm willing to sort of run, like I said, head first into it. Um, so that is something that I, I really appreciate about myself um, uh, is that, that resourceful and creative spirit I have, so. <laughs> And that, that'll do it, I think. So thank you guys That's for saying all. good things about yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for sharing your hearts and bringing yourself. Um, sometimes that's not easy to do and you guys did it beautifully. Thank you so much. Thank you. And happy Halloween, everybody. Happy oh. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween everyone. everyone. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Make sure you comment. Happy share. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yes, everybody. And uh, don't forget to check out Certified Life Coach Institute. And um, on our way out, everybody, let's say trick or treat. And then we'll... we'll... <laughs> Knock on the door. Two, three. Knocking. Trick or treat. Bye, guys. Trick or treat.